Hello friends, in my previous four videos we have seen about the content and about the syllabus of uh, engineering metallurgy subject but in this video we are going to start with our new subject that is design of machine elements. See guys design of machine elements is one of the major subject of mechanical engineering and in this subject uh, students need to do various design or student needs to design various machine elements, machine components that we are using in various intermediate parts of machine. So today in this video we are starting with the designing of various mechanical joints that comes under the category of machine elements and the name of that joints are knuckle joint, turn buckle, quarter joint. So we are going to see them step by step and today in this video we are going to start with the knuckle joint. So let's begin. So see guys, as you are seeing the unit number 2 on your slide, the name of unit number 2 is design of joints, levers and offset links. So as I have told you in my introduction that we are going to see all the design of machine elements or uh, all the design of mechanical joint step by step. So today we are starting with the knuckle joint. Okay. So let's start with the designing of knuckle joint step by step. So guys, let me tell you first that what do you mean by knuckle joint is okay so knuckle joint is a mechanical joint which is used to connect two rods that are subjected to axial tensile loads please see guys this is one of the major application or this is the function of knuckle joint that so many students are confused with that that knuckle joint is a used to connect two rods subjected to axial tensile loads why it is axial tens tensile load is uh, given because normally it is uh, used to join two rods or two uh, shaft which are subject to tensile load but there a little bit very short um, misalignment is permissible very short I used to say very short misalignment is permissible which are going to subject it to axial tensile loads okay that is why it is written there knuckle joint is used to connect two rods subjected to axial tensile loads it may also be used to support the compressive load if the joint is guided see guys if your knuckle joint is guided with some uh, additional uh, mechanical arrangement then it can be it can be used for compressive load also then I have mentioned this point third point in uh, bold letters but please see it is not suitable to connect rotating shafts which transmit torque see guys it is not suitable to connect rotating shafts which transmit torque that is why knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are subjected to tensile load but it is not suitable to connect the rotating shaft which used for transmitting the torque or power Axis of shafts to be joined should lie in the same plane and may coincide or intersect. See guys, what is the condition for knuckle joint if you want to connect two rods with the help of knuckle joint that are subjected to tensile load and what is the condition for that? Axis of these shafts, okay, what are the whatever the axis of that shaft that should be joined which should be in proper same plane that should be lie in a same plane or maybe sometimes it is coincide or intersected but so many times that the condition satisfied by joining the two rods which are subjected to axial tensile loads with the help of knuckle joint tells us that axis of shaft to be joined should be lie in same plane okay so this is about the functions and uh, you know requirement of knuckle joint that how we are going to use knuckle joint and for what purpose we are going to use knuckle joint so let me tell you why we are using knuckle joint what is the function of knuckle joint knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are subjected to axial tensile loads okay this should be known by each and every student so guys please see this slide and please read this slide more carefully so that whatever we are going to study that first of all we should know that why we are going to study that okay that why we are studying knuckle joint but we did not know that what is knuckle joint and how it is used so there is no meaning in that so that is why i am telling you to please focus on this slide that knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are subjected to axial tensile load and the axis of these rods should be lie in a same plane that is the condition for knuckle joint again one more important point uh, tells by this slide and the point is that it is not suitable to connect rotating shaft which is transmit the torque okay it is not suitable the uh, transmitting torque shaft okay so guys this is all about the initial introduction of, of knuckle joint now let us see more about knuckle joint now next points are tells us 
and its construction permits limited relative angular movement between rods about the axis of the pin now see guys its construction permits limited relative angular movement okay it it permits very less or limited uh, relative angular movement between the rods because as it is uh, said that the condition of using knuckle joint for joining two rods must lie in same plane okay so for satisfying uh, find that uh, condition its angular movement is very limited and uh, which is not permitted actually okay with in knuckle joint when there is a requirement of angular movement or a small amount of flexibility the knuckle joint is used okay if sometime some angular movement is required then we are we can use knuckle joint and a knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are under a tensile load that we have seen in a previous slide that a knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are under a tensile load i am repeating this i am repeatedly saying this that knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are under a tensile load then next now let me take you to the applications part of the knuckle joint that in which sector or for how many times we have seen knuckle joint oh this is knuckle joint but we don't know that this is the function of knuckle joint or uh, if we have seen before knuckle joint but actually because of uh, you know there is no idea that uh, what is the name of particular joint so we uh, don't get to know that uh, which which is knuckle joint and uh, what is knuckle joint so that is why let me revise you that you have seen knuckle joint and where you have seen let's see knuckle joint is widely used to connect wall rod and eccentric rod see guys right? see guys knuckle joint is widely used to connect wall wall rod and eccentric rods so many times we have seen wall rods and eccentric rods and we have seen that wall rods and eccentric rods are two different pieces of rods and which are connected together or which are connected in line with the help of one joint and that joint is nothing but your knuckle joint okay the next next is the link of a cycle chain see one of the very common if i am talking about the second point if you see or if you focus your concentration or second point then what it is written here in the link of a cycle chain so link link of a cycle chain means all of we have uh, seen cycle all of we have seen chain of cycle so many times we have work on that cycle chain in our childhood so the link of the link which is used to connect so many uh, cycle uh, so many links okay if you observe the chain of cycle or of your uh, two wheeler or four wheeler sorry of your two wheeler then you get to understand that that your chain is made up of so many links that are coupled together or that are connect together by means of various rivets so that link of chain is connected to each other with the help of knuckle joint then levers then if you see so many kind of so many types of hand levers are there so many types of uh, foot levers are there so in that levers also knuckle joint is used then tie rod joint tie rod joint for rope truss and many other links link for suspension bridge see guys this this is one of the uh, major application of knuckle joint application number 4 that is link of suspension bridge now link of sub suspension you, all of we have seen suspension bridges and if not we are going to see it in next slide don't worry about that so link of suspension bridge is the most major application of knuckle joint the next is wall mechanism of reciprocating engine so in wall mechanism of reciprocating engine also their knuckle joint is used then tractor wheel alignment parts see guys tractor wheel tractor wheel alignment parts are so many times they, they are used knuckle joints to align that tractor wheel then robotic arms in robotic arms we are using knuckle joint and fulcrum of lever okay fulcrum means fixed point of lever you can if if i am going to give an example of lever uh, so best example of hand lever is our you know elbow okay hand elbow so hand elbow is acts as your fulcrum which is fixed point and uh, if you pick something in a in your palm that is a load and whatever force that you require to lift that uh, load is your effort okay just similar to your uh, just similar example that you, if you uh, you know uh, if you are doing workout in gym then we are uh, going to lift dumbbells okay by our hand so your elbow acts as a fixed point which is fulcrum for lever and your dumbbell acts as a load which is which you have uh, pick up in your palm and whatever 
effort that you put to lift that load is your effort so in that fulcrum of lever okay knuckle joint is used i have just given you one example that how uh, levers are working okay so guys see all these are the applications of knuckle joint that is uh, it is used to connect wall rod and eccentric rod in a link of a cycle chain then levers and tie rod joint of rope truss then link of suspension bridges wall mechanism of reciprocating engine tractor wheel alignment parts robotic arms and fulcrum of lever all these are the widely used applications of knuckle joint so guys i think i hope all of you have understood that what is knuckle joint and how it is used so let me tell you once again knuckle joint is a mechanical joint which is used to connect two rods with the help of it and the condition for uh, that uh, rod is that rod should must lie in a same plane and it is majorly used to connect two rods that are subjected to tensile load or that are subjected to axial tensile load okay knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are subjected to axial tensile load so guys all about this function and applications of knuckle joint that is where it is applicable so let us see what in next slide so guys in this next slide whatever we have seen in uh, written form so we have we have someone said that pictures are more you know ex uh, expressive than your words so see guys here we are seeing some pictures of knuckle joint some pictures of applications of knuckle joint but if you see this these pictures then you can immediately uh, get in touch with the application of knuckle joint that where it is used particularly so if i am talking about this first image okay if you see my cursor this first image so in this first image you can see this chain uh, you need to uh, you can get to observe okay this chain this is a chain of one machine component so in that chain you can see these links okay you can clearly ob observe these links and these links are nothing but the knuckle joint okay this links of cycle chain is made up of your knuckle joint then again if you i am talking about this second i have told you that it bridge it is used for link of bridges so see this is bridge this is bridge and these are the various knuckle joints see that these these are the various knuckle joints these links are connected with these links and these links we connect with these links so links of overhead bridges are uh, is the major, major ex, uh, application of knuckle joint as we have discussed before so by this by seeing this image you can get to know it very easily the next image here you can see one machine part that is here it is used that this is the knuckle joint see here this is the knuckle joint and this this is used to connect this is one rod okay and this is another rod please see this is one rod and this is another rod and these two rods are used to get in uh, touch together connected together with the help of this knuckle joint and this is fulcrum and the, I, as we have seen the lever this is lever and this is fulcrum fixed point this fulcrum is um, used to connect with this knuckle joint we will impart more focus on this practical application of knuckle joint in this next slide so in this slide this image uh, we have seen in uh, previous slide but i want to convert your attention here so tractors uh, wheel alignment see guys this is generally used to pull tractor uh, trolley okay this is knuckle joint as you are seeing this is knuckle joint and two rods that is this this one and one rod is this this these two rods are getting connected with each other with the help of this knuckle joint and because of that we can easily uh, tow the trolley of tractor okay next is this uh, this is the front wheel drive uh, system of your two wheeler sorry of your car four wheeler sorry so in this also knuckle joint is uh, widely used so guys this is the uh, and in this image you can see the knuckle joint how it is uh, in construction so these are the some practical application images of knuckle joint that where it is exactly used or where it is exactly going to be used so let's move further now so what are the various advantages of knuckle joint as you are seeing on this slide the first advantage is it is simple to design and manufacture see guys what it is written here it is simple to design and manufacture knuckle joint is simple to design and manufacture this is one of the major advantage of knuckle joint next is fewer parts less cost and more reliability see guys fewer parts so many uh, uh, there are not uh, 
so many parts in knuckle joint fewer parts less parts only three or four parts of uh, there and just by three to four parts it has been co uh, constructed successfully less cost more reliability one of the major uh, you know that we need actually whatever product or whatever equipment that we are manufacturing the it should be in le less in cost this is the major criteria so knuckle joint has less cost and more reliability again simple to assemble and dis dismantle see yes. it is very simple to assemble and dismantle also so these are the uh, three most favorable advantages of uh, knuckle joint Le next uh, see what it is written here now so guys we are come up with the actual image of uh, 3d image of knuckle joint that what it is actually and how it is constructed actually see guys there are some elements or some components because of which knuckle joint is created okay so let us see which are they please see see guys this is what this is this element or this component of knuckle joint is called as fork end or it's called as fork okay it's called as fork f o r k please see or it is called as fork end this is fork of the knuckle joint this component is called as i okay this component of knuckle joint is called as i if you see my cursor please see please focus your attention this component is called as i again this component is called as pin okay this is called as pin this component is called as collar and this component is called as taper pin now see this is this, uh, this is the disassembly this is this is the disassembly of uh, knuckle joint that we are seeing okay this is this knuckle joint in dismantal condition okay after if you separate out all the uh, parts of knuckle joint then there are uh, four five parts that you are seeing which are easily separable as we have seen it can be easily separable it is simple to design it is easy to assemble and it is easy to dismantle so that is one of the part of this so what this is the part if you see cursor this part is called as fork this part is this part is called as i end this is pin this is collar and this is taper pin so let me tell you how this knuckle joint is going to be assembled togetherly see so this is called as your fork end this is called as i end this i end is going to fit into this fork end you can see these passages are provided in your fork also and in your i also so this i end that is this is the passage this is the uh, hollow portion this is the hole is there and there are these are the two holes are there in your fork and one the, the two holes are there in your eye this eye is going to fitted into this fork and how we can fix that eye into fork with the help of this pin once your eye is going to fit into this fork then you need to insert this pin into that fork and eye assembly and after uh, fixing this pin uh, into that eye and fork then you can see this pin has one passage over here so this passage get fixed with the help of this collar this collar is going to mount over it and your taper pin is locked is used to locked between these slots so you can see one slot is provided here at your collar and one slot is provided here at your pin so after inserting this i end into this fork this pin is going to lock i end and your fork end and after locking uh, this i end fork end with the help of this pin we need to put collar over this slot and how we can lock the collar and your uh, pin inserted with the help of this taper pin so guys in this way if i hope that you are uh, you have understood this so in this way we can assemble the dismantle knuckle joint what are the various elements of knuckle joint joint that is fork end pin i end collar and taper pin how we can assemble it we need to fit this fix this i end into this fork end there are passages are given and how we are going to fix by inserting this pin into this i and fork end passages we are going to fix this to uh, i end and fork end togetherly and after that we need to put this collar over your uh, uh, passage provided pin and how we are lock it and after inserting this taper pin into this slot we can easily lock your joint so in this way all the dismantle form of knuckle joint 
got assembled okay i hope all of you have understood this then next now see guys now in previous slide in this slide we have seen the knuckle joint in dismantled form and in this we are seeing the knuckle joint in assembled form now you can see how we can uh, you know uh, insert and how we can fix the assembled the joint please see guys this is i have already told you that is fork end okay fork end and this is i end this is i end okay you can see this is i end and this is fork end and how this i end and fork end are get fixed together with the help of this pin okay with the help of this pin and this pin is locked with the help of collar that is here is the split pin okay collar is mounted over there and this is the taper pin okay this is the taper pin is inserted split pin is inserted to lock this uh, pin okay so with the help of this you can see now i end fork end tape collar okay and taper pin and pin all these parts are assembled together okay all these parts are assembled together now in this image so many things are uh, you know get to learn by us this image telling so many things about knuckle joint then please see what this image shows you can see here load okay what it is written here load that is load is denoted by p and here also denoted by p so you must see the direction of this arrows it has in this uh, diagram each and every term has uh, a meaning very very important meaning and that should be uh, understood by each and every student so that then and then only it is possible to solve uh, or design the knuckle joint uh, which is, which we which have been asked in um, exams okay so this arrow is uh, has direction away from the center see guys away from the center so these forces are pull in nature and we know pull in nature means tensile in nature so this is what this load is acting in this direction rightward direction and this load acting in leftward direction that is this both these loads p acting in opposite direction so ultimately ulti this load you know stretches this rod in this direction and this load stretches the rod in this direction so what happens the pin okay the pin and your other components of uh, knuckle joint are rods comes in the tensile load okay comes under failure of tensile load it comes under the tensile failure that is why it is said that knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are comes under axial tensile load okay why it is said knuckle joint is used to connect two rods that are comes under axial tensile load because the load acting uh, is a tensile load and that you can clearly observe in this image that this load is stretching your rod into this and this load is stretching into rod into that direction so this pin has been subjected to tensile axial tensile load okay in this second in this trophy you can see this is rod 1 and this is rod 2 and this is uh, and these are subjected to tensile load and various there are see this is fork end this is uh, pin head this is i end these are load okay and so many other uh, you know notations that you are seeing that is do d1 t2 t1 okay r d small d is there okay capital d is there capital d1 is there okay t2 is there p is the p is there so what are the what is the meaning of all these notations that we need to understand i hope you understood about the uh, this dismantle uh, condition of knuckle joint and this uh, assembled condition of knuckle joint that how it it is going to be assembled and after assembling what kind of stresses are going to be act over it and we need to we need to check what kind of failure okay if we are designing the knuckle joint then what kind of failure we need to take in consideration that all are going to be clarifies in this diagram okay and it will be more clarifies in next slide so let's see now the heading that you are seeing that is design of knuckle joint so in this heading you can see the notations used see guys notations used so i have already told you so many notations are uh, used in previous slide that is do d1 okay small d capital uh, capital d1 capital d and t2 t1 x so all these are various notations that are we have seen in uh, next uh, sorry in previous slide so what is what are the meaning okay what is the meaning of all these notations that should be known by us each and every student should know that because 
only on the basis of these noti notations okay this notations plays very very important role in designing of knuckle joint if you are designing knuckle joint and if you don't know the meaning of notations at what capital D stands for or what T2 stands for or what DO stands for then you can't solve the numericals based on the knuckle joint if you want to solve numericals or if you want to design the knuckle joint successfully then you need to understood these notations successfully then then only it is possible for you to solve problems so without wasting time let us see what what are the various notations and what uh, what there stands for so capital D is equals to diameter of each rod in mm see guys what we have learned we have learned that the curl joint is used to connect two rods that are subjected to axial tension loads two rods okay two rods so capital D is the diameter of each rod each rod because diameter of rod should be same capital D is the diameter of each rod then D1 D1 is the what enlarged diameter of each rod enlarged means maximum diameter of each, lot, each rod then next is small d small d stands for diameter of knuckle pin see diameter of knuckle pin in mm all dimensions are in mm let me uh, tell you all dimensions that we are considering for designing knuckle joint are in mm so small d stands for diameter of knuckle pin do then what do stands for do means outside diameter of single eye or fork outside diameter of fork or single eye then small d1 stands for diameter of pin head in mm see d means small d means diameter of knuckle pin and d1 small d1 means diameter of pin head in mm so don't get confused with that t2 t2 means what thickness of each eye of fork in mm thickness of fork in mm t1 means thickness of eye end that is rod 2 in mm don't get confused t2 means thickness of each eye of fork in mm and t1 means thickness of eye end of rod 2 in mm and what x stands for x stands for distance of the center of fork radius capital r from the i in m so all these notations uh, we need to calculate while designing the knuckle joint so guys if you want to design the knuckle joint so you should know about the all these notations which are you know uh, playing very important role in designing of knuckle joint now see the next slide tells us about the assumption of stress analysis of knuckle joint see assumptions of stress analysis of knuckle joint see guys we are doing i am telling you that we are what we are doing we are doing designing of knuckle joint so what actually we are doing that should be known by us okay so we are designing knuckle joint means what we are doing we are doing stress analysis of knuckle joint because whatever the stresses which are going to act on that joint that stresses we need to take in consideration and after doing successful analysis over the stresses we need to calculate the safe condition for knuckle joint okay let me tell you why we are going to do design we are going to design any component anything to prevent its failure okay to prevent its failure in order to prevent the failure of component we need to do design now assumption for stress analysis of knuckle joint so if you want to design knuckle joint then we need to analyze stresses completely and how this analysis is going to be done please see what it is written here the rods are subjected to axial tensile force okay what we are we have assumed if we are uh, design knuckle joint then we are assuming that your rods which is used to connect uh, by knuckle joint the rods that are subjected to axial tensile force means axial tensile force are acted on rods the effect of stress concentration due to holes is neglected see guys we need to consider that and we are considering that effect of stress concentration is zero or negligible the force is uniformly distributed in the different parts and again this also we have assumed or also uh, for designing of knuckle joint we have we have to consider this the force which that are going to be act on your knuckle point that are that is uniformly distributed in different parts of knuckle joint okay so all these components and all these uh, assumptions that we need to take in consideration before designing of knuckle joint now see guys in this image you can see design of knuckle joint now by this image we, we should get to uh, know that how it is okay how it is to be designed and what kind of stresses are going to be act over your uh, component of knuckle joint 
See guys, we have seen this is uh, this is fork. This component is called as please see my cursor. This component is called as fork. This component is called as your I I end, and this is pin. Okay. Now how we can connect this? This is in uh, dismantle situation. Now how we can connect it? This I end is going to be fixed into this fork, and this pin is going to be inserted over here because these passages are provided here. You can see. So figure shows free body free body diagram. of three main components of knuckle joint subjected to tensile force please see guys now this force p is stretch your uh, fork stretch your fork to leftward direction and this is to rightward direction so this is on your pin on your pin this forces p12 p p12 x p12 x because of this force p and this p this force p acts because of this force p okay so because of this your pin subjected to crushing failure also see guys this forces are acting from this direction and this forces are acting this direction so compressive or crushing so your knuckle pin so knuckle pin is subjected to crushing failure please see please see this because this this forces are acting in this direction and this force is acting in this direction so your pin will be crushed or compressed so your pin will be crushed or compressed so knuckle pin is subjected to crushing failure and knuckle your fork end and your i end is subject to tensile and shear failure okay so by this diagram you can understand we can understand that what kind of stresses your knuckle joint is subjected to now design of knuckle joint now if i want to design knuckle joint then what we need to do or what i should do see guys in order to find out various dimensions of the parts of knuckle joint failures in different parts at different x sections are considered next is the stresses developed in the component should be less than the corresponding permissible value of stresses see guys with one of the very very important uh, point regarding uh, design point of view of knuckle joint or design point of view of anything whatever the stresses develop in the components during its working okay whatever the stresses develop in the components during its working that should be less than the corresponding permissible value of stresses it should be less than permissible suppose i have designed the uh, knuckle joint for 200 mpa okay for sustaining capability of 200 mpa or 200 newton per mm square and my if my induced stress okay when i have uh, put it on working condition and if my induced stress on knuckle joint going to be at more than 200 mpa or more than 250 mpa then ultimately your knuckle joint is going to be fail okay so that is why it is that should be consider that whatever stresses that are going to induced or that or that are going to act on your component it should be less than your permissible value of stresses next is so far each type of failure one strength equation is written and these strength equations are then used to find various dimensions of the knuckle joint see guys so for each type of failure we need to uh, write or we need to uh, ready or prepare one equation and then after putting the value in that equation we need to calculate the one uh, answer or one dimension of knuckle joint then some empirical relations are also used to find dimensions see guys there are some empirical relations in case of knuckle joint that is for calculating various uh, d1 do t1 t2 all these uh, notations we need to calculate and for that we need to use some empirical relations and what are those we are going to see in detail in next presentation so guys uh, in this video we have seen about the detail theoretical portion and detail theoretical information about knuckle joint okay in next video we are going to see the design procedure and numerical